a law of Pepsi Cola. Well, I don't think I'll be able to go to this one this year, but I did go to this a couple of years ago. Yeah, I took part in a paranormal investigation, which like lasted until like from the evening till uh, like midnight. But where I went to was a former prison or jail in Peru, Indiana. Peru, Indiana. So that was like a fun little thing I took part in, just with a paranormal group, Indiana Ghost Doctors. Which uh, a couple of people from that group take part in uh, the restoring project of the Adams Mill, which is near Cutler, Indiana, near Flora, Indiana. So kind of near Lafayette and Delphi. Really cool uh, mill, which I'll have to show here pretty soon. Hopefully this month. I mean. Yeah, probably this month. <laughs> There's a bit more going on there than just the mill. But, yeah. So this was a spooky, spooky little experience here. And so I'm not really, uh... I'm not really, you know, what they call, like, sensitive, you know, to, like, the spirits and such like I am a skeptic about it I have but I'm really open-minded about the spirits and the ghosts and such um I just never really had you know that many experiences with it if any and so I can't really you know I can't really you know say that <laughs> um it's been easy for me to really pick up on things such as that. And so, you know, other people will have experiences like that, you know, chills and maybe see some apparitions. Now, the closest things I ever really heard were in a couple of locations. And it could have been really anything. It could have been, you know, just any sounds you would hear in an abandoned place. But, but one of the places wasn't really exactly abandoned, and it was in uh, Tunnelton, Indiana. And while I was walking through the tunnel itself, and actually about to reach the end, which is an active train tunnel still, just not a lot of trains go through it. Um, but it's supposed to be super super haunted and a lot of parent paranormal activity and even cases of like people like uh, someone throwing a brick at somebody while they were leaving the the entrance of the tunnel which like damn <laughs> violent ghosts <laughs> um so this is actually something i picked up on the audio because I actually didn't really notice it at first until um, playing it back and I might pull up a video of that here uh, soon or maybe in a future video just to show it but you there's a lot of water droplet noises and such and it I mean whatever and so doing the video playback and walking outside the other side of the tunnel I hear this really just really quick you know it's just like a voice and it's like a just a just a lady's voice and it's just so out of place with all the ambience and noises going on and it just sounds like nothing else that was going on in that tunnel noises so it's just 
yeah, I would say that's like one of my closest experiences with anything like that. And yeah, like this this place was spooky though when it got like closer to night, you know, when it got darker. Yeah, I really like that experience. So I, I need to do more paranormal investigations and such. I would like to have something like that happen though, you know. <laughs> Being a skeptic, I, I I just like to be proven wrong and be like, you know, something crazy happened to me. But, I mean, it just really hasn't been anything yet. Um, one, of the, one of the people here, and it's, I think it was this entrance here. It, it might be somewhere else, but they swear they saw a um, shadow figure walking around down here. I think it was around down here. I didn't really see anybody, but they did. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, supposedly this uh, jail is really haunted. And also, because it's around this part of Indiana, and I think uh, John Dillinger was actually in his prison at one point. Yeah, this is just the rust. It's just I really love the the rust going on in the the jail. Just the chipped paint and the the rust. It's, it's just got such a cool look. Old block, yeah, yeah. I got some bad people in this jail though. <laughs> well, anyway, the other. The other type of closest thing I could say that having any, having any kind of contact with something like that was walking through the Indiana Sanatorium, the Indiana State Sanatorium, which is near Rockville, Indiana, and of course, of all places, it would be in the uh, nursing home area. Because that is like the most haunted part of that whole sanatorium. And that's where most of the the activity goes on there. And my friend Brent, he, um, he had experience of his own there. Walking through the hallway and just super chill by this, like the temperature dropping like 30, 40 <laughs> degrees. And it was like next to this uh, chair in the hallway in the uh, nursing home so um I was by myself because I think he left um a little bit ago he had to go he had to head out because we, we we both went out there to you know just do some do some exploring and video because it's one of those places where you can uh get into it just by like an admission, so it is like a, just an abandoned place that you can actually just explore. You know, they just let you loose and you can explore by yourself pretty much, or some buy or whatever. And so I mean, there's just a couple other people there, and and it was like you know towards the time when you know they kind of closed down the place, and so you're you're you can't really uh, stay for too much longer. And so, you know, I just went back to the nursing home area because I thought, you know, hey, you know, I'm by myself. This is probably the time when any type of activity would probably happen the most. You know, it'd be the most quiet. It would just be just me and my thoughts and such. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, what I heard was um, this interesting tapping from the ceiling. And it could have been like just like a critter or something, but just really freaky tapping just from the ceiling, ceiling tiles. And there was also this other really strange mechanical sound that I heard inside of the wall of one of the uh, patient's rooms. Or, yeah, you know, one of the, the rooms that people would stay in. And it was like around like. Just like in, in like in the wall in between like the walls into like the other um the room next door. And so 
It's just strange mechanical noise, and I just don't think there was really any power even hooked up to that area, as far as I can tell. Or pretty much the majority of the sanatorium has no power anymore active. So it's just really, really odd. <laughs> It was it was coming in from the inside of the wall, and you know going around going to the next room next door, and it just you, you hear it a little bit, but like once I walk up to the other side of the wall, it eventually stopped, and I think that yeah it, that's in the video itself, and you can check um, my sanatorium exploration on my main channel. I think it's like the last part, but I think it did pick it up, the sound. But yeah, this is the strangest thing. The part that sucks about that type of thing is you don't have a witness with you. <laughs> so it is better to have witnesses of those type of things because yeah, it's easier to pick up the sound when you're by yourself. But it is better when you have somebody else hearing these strange sounds and it's not just your imagination or something else. So it is always good to have a, a witness or somebody with you when you're doing these things. But I mean, someone that's a skeptic, it's not like I'm really lying about it. <laughs> I mean, it's even in the video. Anyway, yeah, this, um, oh, there's some cats. So one of the reasons this place is really haunted was around this area right here. So in this jail's construction, in the really early years of this construction, um, and I just I don't remember the whole story, and it's kind of hard to find, but there's this corridor that's going all around this. It's just like this square, you know, just a corridor to just go around in a square. And it has this here. This is kind of just in in the corridor, like inside the box. And from what they say, there were workers here. And this was during the, the, the Jim Crow. This was during the... Uh, yeah, not so great part of our history. And so there were, there were black people, black workers, digging the, the basement area of this um, jail. And there was this accident, this cave-in, and supposedly they just left the bodies down there. They never, they never brought them back up. And some say that it was an intentional, um, you know, buried, you know, accident where it all collapsed on them when they were um, making the basement in order to not pay them or something like that. And so it was just something really awful like that. And it's awful in itself that they just kind of just put this wall here instead of, you know, retrieving the bodies of these, these poor people that were working on this place in some pretty miserable conditions from the sounds of it. And so that is why supposedly there's like a lot of haunting um, going on with this jail is because, yeah, I'd be pretty uh, PO'd if I was... You know, this is the way I, I went because of neglect like that. And just awful, just human things like that. <laughs> and so, that is the story for that. Now, is there truth to it? Is there truth in the story itself? I mean, it's something that I'd have to investigate more in, or... There probably is something around because it, it's it's this thing hard to find. It's a story it's hard to find, but there are people around Peru and around that area that know about it. And so, yeah, it's interesting.
No, yeah, I didn't really experience really too much there, though. I said I'd, I'd probably experience anything, I mean, closer in the, the sanatorium place. And that may have been because there were less people during that, that whole thing. And I don't know. But yeah, it's just something that I keep an open mind about because, you know, you never know. You never know these type of things. But, yeah, I just wanted to sh share some pictures of that because I would have liked to go back here someday just to do, you know, check it out again. Yeah, I mean, you get this... There's actually somebody living in like a section of it, actually, and that's yeah, it's it's interesting. So I think they actually own like the whole thing, but they kind of just let us in to be able to do this. Yeah, that really old advertisement pictures they were using here. It looks like that door. Yeah, well, there you go. That's the Peru jail. Man. What a freaky place, though. <laughs> it's just like all the really old metal bars and such. And yeah, some of the jail cells were just like a, a, just a bar, you know, j just a jail cell inside of a room, so it's just like a cage, pretty much. And that was just kind of their way to make sure they don't, you know, have find a way to escape or something here. Man, look at that spider webs. Man. <laughs> anyway, yeah. It's a fun little thing, place I explored. Well, I got some more coming up and actually going to the place. I'll see you all in the next video here in this spooky uh, October series here. All right, see you.